so welcome this is Kim Knight here from KimKnightHealth.com and today what we're looking at is the metaphysical meaning of back pain so back pain is a huge issue and if this is the first time that you've come across one of my videos what I do is I help people identify and clear the root emotional metaphysical meaning behind physical pain or fatigue so I'm all about getting to the root cause, which is very, very fascinating. And just uh, FYI, I'm going to be talking this week on what well, I am on on the, the film Lifestyle Medicine, which you can access from KimKnightHealth.com. And I'm going to be sharing at the end of our presentation today uh, about an online summit with lots of people like myself who are into this root cause diagnosis. Uh, style of medicine uh, we have an online summit which is um, taking place which you can also register from kimnighthealth.com so before going any further I just want to say that uh, I do not diagnose heal cure treat any person or any medical condition and you are fully responsible for how you use any of the information that I'm going to be sharing today so just to start off with, with some statistics, uh, at any given time, 31 million Americans are experiencing lower back pain, and it is the single leading cause of disability worldwide, according to the Global Burden of Disease um, survey in 2010. Back pain is one of the most common reasons for missed work. In fact, it's the second most common reason for visits to the doctor. And experts estimate that as much as 80% of the population will experience a back problem at some time in their life. So back issues are very common and they're also very disruptive. If anybody has had back problems, we know how completely debilitating they are. So what we're going to do today is look at, well, why do we have back pain really at a fundamental level? Uh, I'm going to share my journey of recovery from 20 years of back pain and then we're going to look at the core emotional what we call conflict themes of back pain and maybe ask some questions um, for anybody who's listening live. So I do want to say as well that uh, if we do come into some questions that normally I, I, I see people one-on-one -on -one with a full consultation, with a full history intake, which is very, very different from what I'll be doing today, where it's just a little snapshot, a little soup song, if you like, of what we might do in a full session. So uh, it's important to know that. So let's start off with just a little theory to begin with. Uh, every part of our body has a biological function but also a biological function or we could say a physical function and a metaphysical function. And the word meta is not woo-woo. A lot of people think the word metaphysical is like oh there's all berries and crystals and you know all that sort of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with any of that, but the word metaphysical means beyond physical, above physical. So meta health is looking beyond the seen. We're looking for the unseen causes of what is going on. And even, for example, if we have a car accident or we fall down, there's always something deeper, more hidden that we haven't seen about why we actually had that accident. So there are no accidents. There literally are no accidents. So we have this physical cause and a metaphysical beyond cause. And what I'm interested in all the time is looking for this metaphysical cause because it is the root. It is the root cause of the problem. And unless we get to the actual root cause, we are not going to be able to uh, effect full healing. So one of the really, really fascinating things is that every organ or organ tissue in our body is related back to what we call a brain relay, so a part of our brain. And uh, there are four specific areas of the brain in general, and each of these four areas of the brain have a different emotional conflict theme. 
And what this means is that if we have a certain emotional conflict theme or emotional trauma or um, emotional stuff stuck in our body, uh, that it's going to relate to a certain or affect a certain part of our brain, which in turn will also affect a certain part of our body. And this is all the body's incredible natural intelligence. It's, it's doing exactly what it needs to do. If we have a pain or a symptom in a certain part of our body, it is absolutely perfectly meant to be in that part of the body because there's a message, there's a meaning, and we have to identify and, and discover what that is, which is why I call myself the Kiwi Health Detective because that's what I help people to do. So these four areas of the brain are the brainstem, the cerebellum, the cerebral medulla, and the cerebral cortex. And you don't really need to know that, to be honest, in order to understand what I'm sharing. It's just interesting. And the brainstem and the cerebellum are more part of the old brain, uh, our reptilian brain, the first part of the brain that was developed uh, you know, as a human being. And the cerebral medulla and cerebral cortex are part of more the new brain, which developed later. And there are four core themes that relate to these four brain areas. Uh, there's, for example, survival uh, and um, ability to digest. Um, well, digestion, let's just call it digestion. Uh, integrity and protection. The, these are, by the way, the emotional conflict themes. So we have survival and, and our ability to digest life. We have integrity and protection. Um, in other words, being able to protect ourselves and maintain our integrity. We have inferiority or self-worth, uh, self-value, all that sort of thing. And we have territory and social contact, which is um, you know, outside of us, um, the people around us. And so we're looking really, when we're talking back pain, we're, we're mainly looking at musculoskeletal. It can also, you know, overlap into other organs and organ tissues, but I'm just trying to keep it simple here. So we're really looking at musculoskeletal. And if we ask ourselves what's the job of the spine and the musculoskeletal system, in general, we could say, well, the spine is to, you know, hold our body up and to maintain structure and strength. And we know that, we don't even often think about it or ask ourselves, but that is actually you know, what, what our spine and skeleton and skeletal structure and muscles are doing. And obviously the muscles, they also allowed us, allows, allow us to move. So, I mean, they have many, many different functions, so we're really simplifying here. But to put it really succinctly, the physical job is structure and strength. But metaphysically, it's our inner structure and our inner strength, which we could call self-worth. And this includes, if we don't have self-worth, things like feelings of inferiority, low self-worth, low self-esteem, low self-confidence, low self-value, etc., etc. So, Often, if we have musculoskeletal problems, then we need to look at, okay, well, what self-worth and self-value issues may I have? And the really tricky thing with a lot of these issues is that they really lie deep in our unconscious. Uh, we may be slightly aware of our lack of self-worth or low self-esteem, but the, the really fascinating thing is, is that we're never really fully aware of everything. And that's why we often need the help of somebody else because we just cannot see our own stuff. And, and it's, we can liken it to the dark side of the moon where you can, you can just never see the dark side of the moon. It doesn't matter how much you try, you just can't see that side of the moon. Um, so we're not aware of what we're not aware of. Um, and so the trick is, well, how do I become aware of what I'm not aware of? Because I may be aware that I'm unaware but I don't know what it is that I'm not aware of. So this is, this is the journey of healing. Um, it's all about discovering ourselves and finding out about ourselves. So the muscle is 
around is to do with self-worth, movement, strength, and the bones are to do with self-value, um, self-devaluation, stability, strength, etc. So <clears throat> I just want to share before, I'm going to share some more detail on, on different bones, uh, different muscles, etc. in a minute. But before I do that, I just want to share my own story of how I overcame years and years of chronic back problems. So when I was in my 20s, I think I was maybe 25, and I'd never had a back problem ever, never had any problems. And then one day I was cleaning the windows in my flat in London. It was a first floor flat, so it was quite tricky to sort of lean outside the window and clean the windows. And I somehow uh, was obviously twisting myself in a, in a not so good way. And I felt something twinge or tweak. And anybody who's done that, they, they know what that feels like. It was the first time I'd ever done anything like that. And I could feel something move or tweak inside of me and didn't feel particularly good, but it also wasn't particularly painful. And I just carried on. But as in I carried on with my life, I carried on cleaning the windows, I think, and I carried on with my life. But over the next three months, I started to notice that I was getting stiffer and stiffer in my lower back. So I'd actually done something, it was in my lower back somewhere in the sacral area, as I was to learn later. So, uh, and actually, as I was to learn later, it, it was the sacroiliac joint. I didn't know that at the time. But over the next three months, I noticed that my back was getting stiffer and my range of movement was reducing until one day I was putting my sock on and I couldn't. I could not put my sock on. I couldn't bend over and reach my foot. And I thought to myself, you know what, I've been noticing that, you know, my flexibility has been reducing and actually it's even a little bit sore, but this is ridiculous. You know, surely this can't be right. And I thought, I, I need to go and see someone. But up until then, the only practitioner, medical practitioner I'd ever been to was a doctor. I had literally never been to anybody else. I'd never heard of anything else. So I think I went to the doctor and they said, well, we don't know, we can't help you. So I was like, okay, thanks. Um, and so I was literally looking through the yellow pages and somehow I found my way to an osteopath. And fortunately for me, it uh, turned out to be a cranial osteopath, uh, which are much gentler than a bone crunching osteopath. And so I went for, uh, to see this osteopath. And the first thing they said to me was, well, you should have come three months ago as soon as you'd done it, uh, because now your body's compensated and set in, and now it's going to be harder to get better. So he did whatever he did and, you know, some manipulations and cranial sacral and it definitely helped and I felt a lot better and I got my range of movement back. But, uh, and by the way, there's a tip there is that if you do hurt your back, I highly, highly recommend that you go and see somebody as soon as possible, just even on a physical level to help get the back back into alignment. Uh, personally, I think that is very, very important. Uh, and I always do that myself, or not that I really hurt my back anymore, but I always, I learned to do that, uh, and, and it really, really helped. So anyway, after that first time, or after, you know, it healed, but then every so often, just seemingly I would do something random, I'd lean forward, I'd turn around in the car, I mean, nothing major, but I would, inverted commas, put my back out again. You know, that's the phrase that we tend to use. And I would be in agony all over again, back to the osteopath all over again. And I remember one time being out of London at a photography course, and I, I don't know, I can't even remember what I did, but I woke up in the morning and uh, literally could not stand up. I was literally at a 90 degree angle, like a little old lady that you might see walking along the street with a walking stick and they're just bent at 90 degrees. And that was my range of movement without being in agony. And it was amazing. I went and had a session and, and that was actually, maybe actually that was the first time that I had a craniosacral session. 
And I was just absolutely blown away by the fact that it seemed like he was doing nothing. And yet after 30 minutes, I could stand up straight. So I do highly recommend craniosacral uh, therapy and craniosacral osteopathy. But even though I kept on having these treatments and I would be fine after a day or two, uh, I mean, sometimes I had really bad uh, times where I couldn't even get off the floor. I'd be lying on my back on the floor, could not move. This kept on repeating, repeating, repeating. I have lost count of the number of times that it, that it happened. And then I had a turning point. And the turning point was probably about 20 years later. I was in New Zealand by this time and I was on holiday in the South Island. And I got up on my first morning, really, really excited, uh, looking forward to going skiing. And I was trying on my ski boots and I just had my legs crossed, was putting on a boot, pulling it up, boof, back gone. Absolutely immobile, in absolute agony, lying by myself in this hotel, uh, not able to move, uh, lying in bed. After about a, an hour or so, I, I rang the reception and said, listen, I can't move, uh, I need some help. And they uh, sent the doctor around, took about, I don't know, an hour or two to arrive. He gave me morphine checked on me a couple of hours later still couldn't move still in agony despite the morphine was told that i couldn't go to hospital it was too too far it would be too painful and so they arranged for me to go and see the local osteopath so they took me in an ambulance took me to the to the osteopath i was totally out of it on morphine uh, you know just <laughs> just in this drugged fat, fat, you know space and she gave me a treatment. And then at the end of the treatment, she did something extraordinary. She said, okay, you're coming home with me and we're gonna look after you. And I was blown away. There was a complete stranger had just offered to take me home, to her home. And I mean, I, I was so, you know, I mean, I, was, I couldn't even think straight. I mean, I could barely get words out of my mouth, but I just agreed. And so ambulance took me to her home. And for the next five days, or no, it was less than that, it was three days, I think she gave me a treatment every day. And I would, you know, I went from crawling along the floor to crawling on my knees to being able to walk very gingerly. And over that three day period, I had an incredible um, recovery. And it is amazing how our body can recover even when we've been in agony you know three days later we can be okay again and i i felt after about four days you know what i i don't want to impinge on there you know i i just feel like i'm in their home and I, I I need to go and I also felt like I was well enough to go so I said to her listen I'm, I'm gonna leave today because I was staying at a guest house not not too far away and she said yeah that's fine still come back and have some treatments and just as I was leaving she said something and I got it I got why I'd had all my back problems now bear in mind that what was happening for me or what happened for me is going to be slightly different for you <laughs> Um, so this is, I'm not saying that what I'm about to share is the cause or the solution to all back problems. It was just that it was the missing piece for me. So as I was leaving and getting into the car, um, she said to me, you know, you've always got someone, uh, sorry, you've always got somewhere to come to. If you need to, you can always come back here. And nobody had ever said that to me. I had never felt like I had ever ever had somewhere to go because I grew up in a very emotionally unsupportive environment. I mean, my parents, they did their absolute best and they're lovely people and they provided for me in many ways, but I was not provided for at all emotionally. And I felt very alone and very isolated and very unsupported as I was growing up. And so when she said this to me, she said, you know, you've always got somewhere you can come back to. It was like, wow, nobody has ever offered that to me before. And I've never experienced feeling <clears throat> supported and nurtured and, and safe in that way before. And, and ever since then, like once I got that, that total 
understanding of, oh my goodness, this is why my back, I've had back problems for 20 years because I never have really felt supported, I didn't have problems again. I mean, occasionally, yes, I might tweak my back, but nothing like what I used to. Um, very rare. And for example, uh, I never used to be able to do yoga. I'd always put my back out doing yoga. Now, don't have a problem. And, you know, and so I'm older, you know, <laughs> I'm 20 years older, and yet my back is stronger. So that was my learning around back problems. And, you know, there are some methodologies which um, go through and, and say, you know, well, each, each, um, each vertebra has a different meaning and uh, you know there are just there's, there's a lot more information that a uh, lot more detail that we could go into but not going to go into here but what I will do is share just a few uh, of the themes of different parts of the back so for example uh, the cranial bone and the skull and the cervical spine and the neck can be around moral or intellectual self-devaluation. So, of course, we're nearer to the head, we're nearer to the brain, you know, like, am I intelligent enough? Uh, that sort of thing, you know, feeling dumb, feeling unintelligent, um, that, that type of self-worth issue. Uh, our shoulders, of course, it's like we carry our burdens and a weight on our shoulders. So it's like, okay, well, what weight are you carrying on your shoulders if you, if you have problems in, in the shoulders? The ribs, because we've always got to think, what is the physical job of that part of the body and what is the metaphysical job of that part of the body? So, for example, the ribs, they protect, right? The ribs protect our internal organs at a physical level. Um, so if we have problems with our ribs, often we don't feel like we can protect ourselves. Now, I remember once years ago doing a session with a doctor and he had had really, really bad pain uh, in, 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 in a rib area. And I can't remember if it was the rib or whether it was the organs behind the ribs. But I remember that he had this really bad pain for years, like several years in his ribs. And we did a little session, one of my Kiwi Health Detective sessions. Uh, we did a shortened version of it at the time, I remember. And within 20 minutes, he understood, oh my goodness, that is what was going on emotionally, which has caused this pain. And his pain just disappeared, boof, just like that. And this can happen when we hit the, the sweet spot, our pain can go because it no longer needs to be there trying to teach us something. So for example, uh, also the hip, or hip area, uh, maybe about, you know, we can't hold an argument. Um, we're having difficulties um, in, in, in uh, communication with, with somebody. And if we think of our ankle or our legs or our toes, uh, those physically, these parts of our body, um, part of their job is about balance. Um, so, for example, uh, some of the themes associated with the ankles and the legs and the toes are not being able to balance or jump or kick or deal with something. So I'm not talking physically, I'm talking metaphysically here. So, um, and, and the lumbar spine, just one more, is, um, is, a, is core, de, core devaluation because uh, our lumbar spine is, is the part of our body that uh, it, it's a very strong part, it's got very large vertebra uh, in that area and it, it is all about support and feeling whether we're supported and therefore whether we can then support ourselves. because if we don't feel supported when we're growing up then we don't feel that we're able to support ourselves. so there's there's so many meanings and despite the fact that you can it's just a tip here is that you can read lots of books and you know like Louise Hay you can heal your life and there's quite a few other books that give me metaphysical meanings of physical parts of the body. But one of the things that I've discovered is that it's all really unique to us. We've got to discover what is, what is our own unique meaning, and it will be different. So if one person has a problem or two different people have a problem in the same part of the body, the meaning actually and the message will be unique to that person. So it's really important if you're looking at 
charts or books on this sort of information, you've still got to relate it back to you. I have a question, uh, Kim. Yes. You said that you realized when she offered you to come back whenever you want, you realized that you have been unsupported and that's the cause of your back pain. And you said since then you never had back pain again. So my question is, was it just that simple realization which took your back pain away or that yeah that that's that's what I am asking. Well I I, I said that the main problem was gone. I, I actually have mm -hmm. had a few little niggles not recently, but after that I did have some, some niggles. But it was like the whole thing changed. There was like it, a turn sorry, getting some funny feedback. I'll just I'll just mute you while I'm answering. Um I I it was like there was this turning point. With that realization was a turning point. And I, and it's also to be remembered and be borne in mind that I'd done a lot of personal development on myself up to that point. I'd been, you know, digging deep into myself and understanding myself and healing myself from many other chronic illnesses, uh, which were also connected with all of that. <laughs> and this is the thing, as I said at the beginning, this is only a snapshot what I'm talking about today. Uh, so I'd already done a lot of work on myself, let's say, a lot of uh, introspection and learning and discovery, et cetera, et cetera. And that just happened to be the turning point for me in my back issue. Now, there were other issues still that I, well, that I'd either healed or still had to work on, you know, so because I had chronic fatigue and depression and asthma and this and that and the other. But just for the back issue, that was the core realization for me that helped to finally shift gears. Uh, completely. Does that help answer your question? I am guessing, uh, I am aware we are not doing any consultations here, but what what I would like to know, because when I think about my back pain, I, I am pretty sure I know exactly where is it coming from, so I am aware of all these things and yet I am not able to do anything with that. Well let me ask you a few questions. As I say we're not we're not doing a full thing here because it's not the place to do yeah. it, but just to give an idea and this is just I don't know where we're gonna go with this because I have no idea where, I, of your situation. So what is your back problem? Well exactly what you just said it's exactly the same thing unsupported since I was born. I lived in very unsupported family and somehow for some reason I always feel unsupported in relationship. So that unsupported feeling and financial insecurity, I believe it's an absolutely number one problem of my back pain. But can you, actually what I was asking uh, was I, I'd like to know physically what's going on. Ah, physically. Oh, I just uh, I just constantly get that lower back pain. Sometimes I just uh, do yoga and I just can't move like you said anymore after yoga I have to stop. Sometimes I just stay longer and my lower back pain is really too bad. And now recently, this happened three weeks ago, when I have done absolutely nothing, and I started to have such a severe back pain and I actually understood without even talking to you it is this must come from emotional background because I haven't done anything to my back and it's just painful, painful, painful. As, as you said, I can't put, so put socks on, <laughs> right. which is not much fun anymore. Right. So, um, so when you say lower back pain, can you be more specific as to the area of your spine? When, if you would see me stand straight, I am completely into right side. No alignment of my body is on the right side. It's not straight, but my 
right side of lower back is always, you know, kind of you can see it. I can't put myself back to that alignment. And it's yeah, all I'm all I'm asking is for the physical location. Yeah, so the right side you're saying. Yeah, it's not it's both sides, but uh, I am kind of out of alignment on the right side, but the pen is on both sides, left and right. Right. And but if you went to a chiropractor or whatever, what yeah. part of the spine are they labeling it? I just want to know. He does my lower back. He always said my upper back is uh, as iron. He can't even move it, and he does my neck. Sorry, he can't move which part of your back? Uh, upper upper back. back. He says it's like iron. Yeah, that's what he said. So he hasn't given you any particular vertebra. He just says lower back, upper back. Yeah, he gave me those three uh, last lower vertebras. He said they completely, uh, they don't have that. So the know, lumbar. Lumbar, yeah. Yeah. So when you have the back pain or, or stuckness, how would you describe what it feels like? How do I describe it feels like? It's completely enabled me to do anything because whether I sit, whether I walk, whether I do whatever, I am such in so much pain. It feels frustrated. Mm -hmm. So I'm writing down, so sometimes I take a bit of a moment to reply. So if you had to use a metaphor to describe what it feels like, so I'll give you an example. Say somebody had an itch, they might say it feels like um, it feels like I have an ant's nest under my skin. If you had to use a metaphor to, for the pain, you and you had it feels like it feels like I am stuck. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. When was the first time that you ever had this problem? Oh, when I was 20s. It started in my 20s. But it's getting worse and worse mm -hmm. and worse. So do you remember the first do you remember the first time it actually happened? Like I had a very clear memory of the first time it happened for me. Do you you may or may not do you No, no not quite like you. So it just sort of came on slowly. No, it used to actually come in a very se severe pain when this, as I said, this right side of my lower back went out of alignment. And I remember I used to go to see, we are talking 30 years ago, I used to go to see the person who was manipulating, you know, kind of yeah, like chiropractor, but not really. And right, no, what I meant was when I said over time, it's like it... I mean, yes, the, the pain came on very quickly when it happened, but it just, was it something that just sort of came on over a period of years? Or I don't know what you mean, Kim. It kept on happening, it, it, and it kept on repeating. Yeah, it kept on repeating, but it was, it was happening maybe once in uh, six months, and now it's there all the time. So the frequency became more regular. Right. So it started in your 20s. Mm. Do you, when you say 20s, are you talking 21, 22, 25, 27? I would, I would say after I gave, gave a birth of when I was 20, yeah. So about when you were about 20. Mm. So what was going on in the 6 to 12 months before it in your life, in the 6 to 12 months before it started? Oh my goodness, I moved to live with my parents-in-law in Slovakia who lived with their parents-in-law, so it was three-generation family, and they absolutely hated me because I came from poor family. So that was probably one of my hardest emotional trauma in my life. Mm. So... You've moved to live with your parents-in-law who were living with, who were living with their parents-in-law yeah. and they hated you because you came from a, a poor family and it was the hardest emotional experience of your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So when you went to live with them, how did you feel? Unsupported, unwanted, useless, everything that you can imagine. No self-confidence, no self-value, nothing. So I felt, I felt like I was, somebody was holding cushion on your face all the time and you couldn't breathe. So what type of emotions would have, because when we feel unsupported and unworthy and useless and we don't have self-confidence and, and we feel like somebody's holding a cushion in our face, we're going to feel certain emotions. So what emotions did you feel? I think it was fear. That would certainly be one of them. Uh, what were you afraid of? Unloved. Mm -hmm. And Unloved. what other emotions would you have felt when you were in that environment? I felt like I was completely trapped and I didn't have any, I couldn't see any way to get out of that situation. Yeah, so you, so you felt trapped, but what I'm trying to help you identify, because this is a missing piece for most people, is they're not identifying their feelings. What yeah. other feelings were you feeling if you were feeling unsupported, unworthy, useless, um, you know, trapped? Yeah, definitely. So what other feelings? I don't know, Kim, what are the feelings? I wasn't good enough, I don't know, it was probably everything. So that's a belief or a thought, I'm not good enough, right? So I'll give you some examples of core emotions. Anger, frustration, hurt, disappointment, sadness. Um, All of it. Right. Definitely and sadness was very big. Mm. And how did you deal with those emotions at the time? I, I even can't imagine now in my 50s how could I actually do it? I don't know. I was, I was actually absolutely, I look like anorexic. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I was scared to get out of my room. I was scared to move or breathe or say anything. It, I, I don't know how I deal with it. I, I guess I was just crying when I could in my room. So how long did that situation go on for? Three years. So you were in that situation, that environment for three years, feeling mm. that way all the time? Did you go down for the mail? No. <laughs> yes, oh. yes, Kim. I, yeah. I am talking oh. to someone. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I want to come back to some of the words that you've shared. I mean, obviously, well, to me, it's quite clear where at least some of this problem is coming from. Uh, and like you said, you know where it's coming from, but you don't know how to deal with it. And that's not the place to do that, to do that here. But if I was, to, one of the ways that we can get clues as to what's going on is that we, um, I'm just going to put that on mute because it's very noisy. Um, is that we can look at the words that we use to describe our physical pain because they tell us actually how we're feeling emotionally. So if I was to ask you, what do you feel? And this could be now or it could be in the past. And they're always connected because the, the, the present repeats the past if it's not resolved. So if I was to ask you, well, where did you, or you know, either now or in the past, where did you feel disabled um, or frustrated or stuck, what would you say? Say it again, where did I feel? Disabled, frustrated and stuck and feel like, you know, everything's just rigid. Uh, actually, it's so interesting what you just said that things are repeated. I feel like that the last two years. Again, exactly the same feeling, different scenario but same feeling. Yeah. And the reason that you'll be having whatever you're experiencing today is because whatever 
the things that in the past have not been cleared at an emotional level. So that energy is still trapped in your body. So the energy of, you know, how it felt for you living in that family is still trapped in your body and that has to be cleared. And then usually I can pretty much safely say that that in itself is a repeat of previous stuff as well. It's like mm. we go back, we go back, we go back, we go back, and we go back to the original thing. And then, you know, especially when you clear the original stuff, then everything else falls down like dominoes. Um, but does that give you, you know, some insights there? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I so think I am, is, I am on a good way to get rid of it with your help. <laughs> yes. So the key is it, it's actually, you know, once we identify the cause, because I don't spend very much time, to be honest, with people on the, on the cause of the problem. We do that very quickly. Most of the time is spent resolving the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we don't have to keep looking at the problem, looking at the problem. No, yeah. it's about clearing the problem and clearing the results of the problem. And, yeah. and so we only, when I work with somebody, we only look at the problem in the first session and then the rest of the time is, spelt, is spent resolving mm -hmm. the problem and it's all around clearing the trapped emotional energy that is trapped in the cells that is causing the body to either have symptoms or a misalignment or whatever it is because there's this trapped or blocked energy. And it's that simple. Makes sense, Kim. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so you're on the right track. <laughs> Healing for me. I am so excited about it. Thank you so much for today. Awesome. Okay, cool. Okay. Bye for now. Bye. So just to finish, uh, if you're interested in learning more about this, I do highly recommend that you check out the film Lifestyle Medicine, which you can do on my website, kimnighthealth.com. And there's also the online summit coming up uh, the 1st to the 7th of June. Um, where lots and lots of doctors and therapists who work in this way uh, will be sharing their gems of wisdom. Uh, and I will also be on that summit, so please do join us. So uh, any more information, just please check out my website. Thank you. Bye-bye.